Let's talk about immigration law. We'll come back to the lieutenant governor thing here in a couple minutes, I promise. But as you know, we finally moved to a place in this country where comprehensive immigration reform is in the on-deck circle, if not actually up at bat. We've had the Gang of Eight in the Senate put forward a plan. I talked to Congressman Carter from Round Rock, who's part of the House's Gang of Eight on Monday in San Antonio. He wouldn't say exactly what's in that plan, except to say that it would be different from the Senate plan. This has also been an issue that you've uh, in, you know, taken on as one of your causes since you've been in office. Uh, what do you think about the Senate plan from what you've heard? What do you think that the ultimate plan that Congress considers ought to be? I'm very glad that Congress is attempting to solve this broken and antiquated problem. Yeah. You know that I was paying attention to it long, long before, before the November outcome elections. of the elections that others woke up and said maybe we need to look at things a little differently. Right. And I got involved in this process because landowners sought me out who were being chased off their property by violent drug cartel members. Uh, we need to be pro-legal immigration. We need to be welcoming to our nation. We need to not chase votes based on what your zip code is, what the color of your skin happens to be. We need to be having policy that allows everyone, regardless of the circumstances of your birth, to grow and succeed. Do you think the that's Senate, happening, Commissioner? You just said chasing votes on the basis I, of your skin color. I, is that happening? I think the National Republican Party just spent $10 million on a study on trying to reinvent themselves. I think they don't need to be looking at reinventing themselves. They need to rededicate themselves to sound policies and sound principles that moves everyone forward. I think there's a communication problem today. We need to fix our failed immigration system. Our economy depends upon that. I said early on that the 11 to 20 million people here that I don't want a government big enough that can round up that many people. That government has failed to stop people at the border. Those individuals in our nation today are a big part of our economy. Right. I also want a system that doesn't encourage future unlawful entry into our country. The Gang of Eight bill today is full of flaws. First of all, the, it Senate, was, Senate, bill. the, the Senate bill that's being looked at today is full of flaws. First of all, it was written by labor union lawyers who are using the same failed methodology that was used in the 1986 bill that has yielded the results that we're in today. So if we adopt that as it's proposed, we shouldn't expect anything different in the next few Sen years. Senator Rubio and Senator Graham gave over themselves to the labor unions on this bill? The labor unions had much too much influence in developing the methodology and the writing of this bill. Something else that's wrong, the metrics that are being used to secure our border, it empowers the Department of Homeland Security, the same people who have said in California the border is a safe border, the same people that have continuously rebuffed our pleas for more resources in Texas and said the border is a safe and safer border, uh, it empowers them to determine when the border is safe and when these new triggers come into being. And I'll tell you a big flaw with it that I think we need to be pro-legal immigration. We have an immigration system that if you want to become a citizen of the United States, we welcome you. It's immigration, assimilation, and naturalization. Citizenship in this context is being used as a political poker chip. It's been used as convenient citizenship, and I think there's a better way. We have to keep in mind that the 11 to 20 million people that are in our nation today are not here because of a failed citizenship process. They're here because of a porous border and a failed guest worker program. I believe Congress, if they really wanted to fix things, could focus on those issues, get a bill passed, and let's create and let's and let's support our existing pathway to citizenship so today. So border, secu border security, border security, and guest worker program would be your your priority. And, and what I mean by that, I was yeah. in a DPS helicopter in the middle of the night, observing as they were dispatching agents on the ground to interdict people in the middle of the night. Right. Pitch black. We're seeing figures on the screen. Right. I'm thinking, we don't know if our agents are going after heavily armed drug cartel members ready to do battle, right. or if they're going after someone uh, that's entering our country illegally, but they're otherwise looking for a job. We need to free up our law enforcement to go after the drug cartels right. and allow people to come into our country through a legal process so that we know who is here and we know when their visas expire. Congressman Carter told me on Monday he believes that the Gang of Eight bill from the Senate is amnesty. Do you believe it's Absolutely. amnesty? Absolutely. You believe it's an Absolutely. amnesty bill? The way that it's written, for instance, uh, some individuals in the bill can get their status corrected for a $100 fine, less than the price of a traffic ticket. So there's, there's nothing in there to say 
use our legal system that no we want to no create because there, right. there's no disincentive. Thank you. Right. You, you know, right. Commissioner, you talked about the need for border security, and I think this is a component of every good conversation about immigration reform is what degree of border security. I know from reading the statistics that net migrations right now are at, are at a recent low and that the Obama administration has deported more people than the Bush administration did. That tells me that maybe we don't have as much of a border security problem. If I'm just looking at those two statistics, maybe we don't have as much of a border security problem as some people say. That's because you're not looking at the full realm of statistics. Tell me you're what statistics I should be looking well, 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 do, 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 do you believe that the Obama, yes or no, has the Obama administration's number of deportations been higher than the Bush administration's? Uh, Yes. Okay, so why am I looking at Obama talking points then? That's, if that's a stat that we both agree Because is true. what unit of measurement is that to declare if we have a secure border or tell, not? Tell me, not? Tell me a stat. Tell me a stat I should be looking stat. at. Let tell me, me tell you a stat you're looking at. Yeah. The most recent fiscal year data by the Customs and Border Patrol right. indicates that apprehensions have gone up this last fiscal year over the other one. Uh, 1.7 million pounds of narcotics were confiscated in Texas alone this last fiscal year, 40% of the nation's total, 230,000 pounds more than in California, Arizona, and New Mexico combined was confiscated within the state of Texas. Yep. In the Rio Grande Valley sector alone this last fiscal year, over 50% of the people that were apprehended were coming from countries other than Mexico. Uh, the apprehensions are not an indicator of a secure border right. when you have billions of dollars in illegal narcotics, human trafficking that are going across our border. It's very simple. If you would like to come with me and tour farmers and ranchers' lands where their property is as brown as that floor yeah. because of the volumes of traffic. Right. I meet with border sheriffs. And they will tell me that drug cartels will send a group of people looking for a job across one part of a county. Yep. They themselves will call the law enforcement. Everyone rushes to that scene, and the drug cartels are moving undetected across our border. That's the reality of the poorest border that we have today. The metrics are not there. And even the Obama administration is saying, yes, do more on border security now. Are they doing that for political reasons, or are they doing it because they know the border is insecure? They truthfully know that that is an insecure yep. border. Okay.